Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Niall Freedy, and I'm happy you're joining me today to talk about running and fine-tuning open source errands on a Google Kubernetes engine. To start off, uh, who already experienced um, open source LLMs? Great, May all, of, all of you. And who uh, is already familiar with Kubernetes? Great, perfect. So um, I'm going to start with an introduction. Then I will uh, explain why open source LLMs, then why Kubernetes for um, uh, running and fine tuning open source LLMs. Then I'll go for um, best practices of running LLMs on Google Kubernetes Engine, and I'll explain what's Google Kubernetes Engine. Uh, uh, do you already uh, use cloud computing? Do you know Google Kubernetes Engine or not? Who already used Google Kubernetes Engine? Great. Um, then I will um, explain LLM uh, fine tuning and what uh, the m method that I used to fine tune my model. I give some best practices as well for fine-tuning LLMs on GKE. And I will finish with uh, a simple demo uh, showing um, um, the LLM uh, deployed on GKE and uh, fine-tuned on GKE. And finally, we will start off with, we will uh, end up with a QA. and a so as you uh, see in the uh, in the picture, uh, open source LLM as are uh, the base, and then we have a lot of other uh, closed source LLMs. But it was the revolution uh, um, started with open source LLMs. So here we have all the base are open source LLMs. So that's why open source LLMs are very important in uh, the AI revolution. Um, uh, also, that uh, increase accessibility. So before, like um, before 2021, 2020, it was very difficult to run LLMs or, or open source LLMs. Now we have more hardwares in order to um, uh, configure LLMs ourselves, run it on-prem or run it on cloud computing. And why open source LLMs for, you know, enterprise or startups or whatever? So the first reason is cost effectiveness. Using uh, your uh, infrastructure to run your LLMs, uh, you can manage your infrastructure b by your, yourself. What I mean by that is um, you can use, for example, infrastructure as code to um, run, for example, a cluster for 10 hours or 8 hours and then uh, shut down the cluster. So it will be cost effective. As well, the flexibility and customization. So uh, open source LLM can be customized. We can fine tune uh, the, 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 the LLM. And in general, we uh, all of us used pre trained LLMs, but in general, when it comes to business, we, we have some business context or some technical wars. When I, for example, talking about uh, a medical industry or health industry, there are a lot of technical wars that uh, the pre trained LLM that we are using today they cannot understand. So that's why. Customization and flexibility of the LLM of open source LLM is very important here. The third thing is community driven. So open source LLMs, we have a lot of uh, uh, people working on optimizing and making them uh, more powerful in order to um, uh, to, to uh, respond to our use case in the business. And finally, privacy and compliance. A lot of industries are, there are a lot of regulations. If I take, for example, the financial industry, it's very uh, difficult to use uh, closed source LMs because they don't want, and um, they, they have a lot of regulation. They, 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 they will, um, uh, they, they don't want their data to be shared with uh, third parties and so on and so forth. So deploying their opens their LLMs by themselves in um, their environment that uh, resolve their um, issue. And now why Kubernetes? Kubernetes is a universal control plane. So um, the first thing uh, and the most important thing on Kubernetes is, is the portability uh, feature or the portability of all the workloads that Kubernetes. So if I run, for example, my model on uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes can be on cloud providers, whatever cloud providers, 
Google, IWS, Azure, or uh, on-premises. You can run your own control plane and you run your model. So the flexibility part, the performance as well. So containerization changed a lot of things when, um, in, uh, when it comes to deploy application, but also when it comes to deploy LLM models or, uh, or uh, machine learning models before LLMs. And the third thing is uh, efficiency. So uh, the auto scaling uh, features and the facility and the ease of um, uh, adding resources, uh, RAM, CPUs to uh, Kubernetes clusters, adding node, it's, uh, it's a game changer as well uh, in, in deploying infrastructure and deploying uh, LLMs. And now, what's Google Kubernetes Engine? So, Kubernetes is the open source uh, product, let's say, and Google Kubernetes Engine is a distribution of Kubernetes, which is managed by Google. And there are a lot of layers here. So, the first layer, as you, the first layer, as you see, is the, the compute layer, where uh, the, where the integration with other um, uh, computing resources like GPUs, TPUs, storage, and networking. So uh, when you deploy Kubernetes, you can access directly the TPUs uh, of uh, Google Cloud, for example, GPUs from NVIDIA, because there are a lot of you know, partnership with uh, both of them. And the second part is uh, the, the sharing. So for example, for GPUs, uh, when, you use, uh, when we use uh, Google Kubernetes Engine, we can uh, do time sharing. If, for example, we have uh, multiple workloads, and I will come back to this uh, sharing options later, uh, later on, uh, we can, for example, run um, different models uh, on the same GPUs. And um, if, for example, the model don't need to be uh, to use uh, the, the, the GPU for 24 hours, we can share uh, the, the GPU with um, the two models or three models deployed on the same cluster. The third uh, thing here is provisioning. Um, Google Kubernetes Engine, or what Kubernetes in general, we can use a provider on Terraform, for example, uh, in order to deploy the cluster. And uh, it's easier than uh, you know, using VM and uh, these kind of things. I'll come back as well to Q, which like, is a job orchestrator uh, for, uh, for example, fine-tuning models and uh, as well the frameworks here. So as you see, there are a lot of uh, open source framework that are natively supported. For example, Spark, uh, Ray, TensorFlow, PyTorch, JAX, uh, CUDA. So these frameworks are compatible as well with GKE and they, uh, um, w when you use GKE, you, you, it is the installation of this framework. So another feature which is very important when it comes to um, the inference of the models is what we call NAP, is uh, the node auto-provisioning. Imagine that you have a model that needs more GPUs or more uh, TPUs, whatever accelerator you are using in order to, uh, to run your uh, model. There is uh, a feature that uh, can be used in order to spin up automatically a GPU when it uh, it goes to a threshold. For example, imagine that a workload needs uh, a TPU v4 with 224 topology. GKE will spin up a second node pool. It's like a node that will be attached automatically to the cluster because your model will be um, uh, uh, like uses a lot of resources. So there is automatically um, one uh, node that will be uh, spinned up. The second example as well for GPUs, which is another accelerator. So imagine that we have an L NVIDIA L4 that we are using, and this is the, um, the GPU that I'm going to use um, in, in, uh, later on. And uh, the same thing if, for example, uh, my workloads needs more uh, L4 uh, uh, NVIDIA GPUs, is the same thing. I will have another node pool with other uh, GPUs uh, spinned up uh, automatically. So uh, sharing GPUs with uh, GKE. Uh, in general, 
there are a lot of options in order to share GPUs or in order to um, manage resources uh, on a Kubernetes clusters. For GKE, there, there are three options that are supported, especially for uh, NVIDIA GPUs. The first one is multi-instance GPUs, which is um, a hardware isolation. So if, for example, you have a lot of workloads or two LLMs or whatever, two teams that are working on the same cluster, and you need um, hard uh, isolation between uh, both of them, so multi-instance GPU is the right uh, option to choose here. The second um, option, which is multi-process MPS, multi-process service, which is a software isolation. So it's kind of the same thing, but instead of having a hardware is isolation, it's, it's in the software layer. So it's like containerization, for example, uh, uh, isolate deployment of application in, in, in a cluster or in a, in a VM. The third option that I've already talked about in the previous um, uh, slides, which is uh, GPU time sharing. So GPU time sharing, as I mentioned, is imagine if I have a, a model or a job that will not use all um, the resources uh, uh, at the same time. So we ca I can share um, like three hours for workload uh, one and uh, three hours of for, for workload two and so on and so forth. So this, this is like um, um, sharing options that are very important when it comes to inference and to running uh, open source LLMs because it reduces a lot of uh, costs and uh, as well maintenance because managing in general GPUs, accelerators in general, GPUs or TPUs is not uh, very easy. So it's better to have a sharing strategy, especially when you are deploying a lot of uh, workloads or a lot of uh, LLMs uh, at the same time. The, the second thing that I want to mention here is the framework that will be used in order to uh, deploy uh, your LLM or uh, run your LLM is very important. Uh, the most uh, known two options here is TGI and VLLM. TGI is uh, from Hagging Face, and VLLM is uh, another product. Um, I, I don't remember the, um, the company that, work, that uh, created this one. Um, so the, the difference between both of them, uh, especially for the performance, for example, VLLM is very known for uh, speed and performance. Um, uh, take the uh, TGI or text generation inference. It can be used for diverse application, but in general, uh, um, the memory is not uh, it, it's not very efficient when it comes to memory, to, to how to manage memory. As well, there is a fine tuning option. For example, TGI um, uh, supports uh, fine tuning, but VLM uh, supports fine less um, options to customize. There, is less op there are less options to customize your uh, models. Um, throughput uh, as well. So for example, lower throughput from TGI and a higher throughput from uh, VLLM. In my um, demo or uh, the, the, the LLMs that I have used, I, uh, I, I used TGI. Uh, for, for, for running and fine-tuning, but in the same repo, I'll share with you the GitHub repo, there is as well the VLLM version, so you can compare um, the metrics, see uh, the memory consumption, and so on and so forth. Once you um, choose the, the framework that you need, there are as well the options. It seems like very, you know, uh, obvious, but there are a lot of people that don't uh, put that in their YAML files. So the limit, sorry for that. Good, thank you. So, um, like when you uh, um, create the YAML file to run your uh, model, uh, it's very important to put um, like how many GPUs you need because it costs a lot of money. So 
Um, here, for example, I'm using two GPUs for Lama 2 uh, 70 uh, billion uh, model, and as well the quantization. Uh, quantize bit stand byte and uh, f4 and general it's used in order to uh, uh, it's, it's a sort of compression uh, to map what we call high um, uh, uh, precision values to lower precision values So now uh, I'll talk about customization of the models. Uh, there are a lot of uh, techniques used in order to customize uh, the models. So I'll start with the, f the easiest one, which is prompt engineering. It's, it's like how you can uh, create a prompt to influence the output of your, uh, of your model. And it's like the easiest one. It doesn't need a lot of expertise here. There are some techniques as well. So for example, is chain of thoughts reasoning or few shots learning giving you know um, some questions or some examples and then ask for the um, for the for, for the for the answer of your um, request the second thing is prompt learning and there are uh, as well uh, multiple techniques here like prompt tuning and p tuning and it's basically based on lstm uh, uh, models and the third thing which I, I use in my fine tuning are a parameter efficient fine tuning. And parameter efficient fine tuning is very important fine tuning and in most of the, it responds, let's say, in most of the, uh, um, most of the use case. And there are a lot of uh, techniques here. There is adapters and LoRa, low rank adaption. And again, <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and why this is like a very important technique is because they will not, it will not um, uh, fine tune all the, the, the parameters. It will only take uh, some parameters of your uh, LLMs and tra uh, let's say change only these parameters. And the fine tuning, uh, it will. Um, tune all uh, model weights. So it will be, um, in terms of time, it will take a lot of time and as well in terms of uh, resources. Um, so back to uh, GKE and uh, for, for example, if we, when, you, we, when you want to fine tune or even to run a model, in general, you need data, and there is something called uh, storage views, which uh, um, which is a layer that can mount the the pod or the container in GKE with a bucket in uh, cloud storage, and this is like done in 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 a two line in the YAML file, and you can have you can put here your data that you gonna use in order to. Uh, fine-tune your model, uh, and then this layer can, uh, you know, mount the data here with the pod, and your LLM can use directly the um, the, the data from the bucket. Why using um, uh, GSS uh, Fuse? Because as, uh, if you, you will not use that, you will use APIs of cloud storage, and it will take a lot of, um, like it, it will not be very performant, and even in terms of throughput, so, for example, using Fuse, there is high throughput storage for read-heavy machine learning workloads. Also, um, uh, for example, for checkpointing, uh, when you, you are uh, fine-tuning or training a model, uh, it's very important to do uh, checkpoints. If, for example, uh, let's say uh, the model is interrupted, you can uh, go back and uh, for, from where it's uh, failed or where it's interrupted. The, uh, the second thing uh, when, uh, uh, when uh, fine-tune a model uh, is uh, Q, Kubernetes Native Job Queuing System, which is um, a queuing uh, system that can be used in order to uh, orchestrate, let's say, the jobs, because by the end, fine-tuning is a job. Uh, it will use the job API from Kubernetes in order to uh, uh, fine-tune a model. 
And Q lets you prioritize your jobs. So for example, if you have three jobs for coming from three workloads, uh, using Q you can uh, uh, change how the jobs will be scheduled on Kubernetes, which will be have uh, more resources than the other, and so on and so forth. So uh, it, it's, it's natively as well um, managed in, in a GKE. So you can have the component installed and manage it directly. You don't need to install it yourself and manage it yourself. And uh, as well, it's a very great tool in order to uh, manage the, the jobs, uh, fine-tuning jobs on, uh, on, on Kubernetes. So now the architecture is very simple architecture for that I've built. Uh, the first thing here is like the GCS bucket model storage. So it's here where, where I will have my model. I, I used Hugging Face uh, to uh, download the model and I put the model here in, in, in a bucket. Then uh, I have um, my cluster, my GKE cluster and I have uh, a node pool. I have two node pool, one node pool with, um, actually in my demo I, I will have only one node pool, which is this one, and I put both of them in the same uh, node pool, but in general it's better to have two node pool because this uh, model loader job doesn't need a lot of accelerate, uh, doesn't need uh, GPUs or, uh, or accelerators. And this one is very small node, it's like, E2 medium um, node pool, so it's like uh, uh, 8 gigabyte or something like that. And this one is a very big node that contains the, uh, the accelerators, so it contains the L4 GPUs. This is the YAML file that I, I have used in order to, this is to, to, to load the model, so uh, this is uh, the, the job. So um, this is the, uh, the job model loader, and this is the GKE GSS fuse, which, uh, as, as I mentioned, sorry for this technical problem, I don't know what, what's going on. Okay. So, um, yeah, so here I used um, the GKE GSS fuse volumes, so uh, in order to mount my pod with the, the, the bucket, with the GSS bucket. Uh, and this is the, code, the Python code that I, uh, I use uh, in order to uh, uh, load the model from Hugging Face. So in general here I have a Hugging Face token uh, that I defined as environment variable. And this is how I load uh, the, uh, the model from Hugging Face and put it in a GSS mount uh, folder, which is here mounted with uh, a bucket. And this is the fine uh, tuning uh, job. So um, it's the same thing. So I have here the volume uh, true. And here I have the container, which is Lama's uh, 7 billion tune example. And um, this is the name of my bucket, AI and GKE uh, N sandbox. And here uh, the mount. And this is the accelerator I'm, uh, I'm using, so NVIDIA L4. Okay, so the, the next slide is about other uh, fine-tuning key consideration, uh, which are very important, and I will uh, focus especially in the, uh, the, the, the monitoring one. So the first one is EPI parameter tuning, like try to experiment with a lot of uh, learning rates, batch size, optimization algorithm in order to find the best uh, option. The second thing, regularization techniques, employ dropouts, so there are a lot of options in general when fine-tuning LLM and sometimes it's very difficult to know all of them, but it's better, now that we have LLMs, what I use in general is I use LLMs in order to find the best options to train my models. Um, also the distributed uh, training, so utilize GK distributed training capabilities to scale across multiple nodes and GPU. What I have discussed about the NAP node auto-provisioning and the monitoring and evaluation. So track metrics loss, accuracy and perplexity to assess model progress. And finally, checkpointing management that I mentioned, like use GSS storage 
for checkpointing management and regularly save model checkpoints to resume training if uh, interrupted. And now I'll show you the demo. Okay, so this is uh, cloud storage. So this is where I, uh, I stored the, um, uh, the, the model, as I mentioned. So when I downloaded the model from the job, the model loader, it, uh, it put all the files that I need in this bucket. So it's AI on GKE uh, and sandbox bucket. This is the files. And then I'll go to Kubernetes cluster here and this is this is like the, the Google Cloud Console. Here I have my cluster, and here I have a on GKE cluster, and here I have my nodes. So I will, as I mentioned, I used only one pool, which is pool one, and the pool one contains three nodes. So these three nodes from pool one. If I click on the node, I can see the configuration of the node. I can see the CPU, the memory, the disk and as well the configuration. So for example, this one, it's not using, it's, there is a lookable, a lookable uh, four GPUs that are not used. But if I go back, for example, to the second or third node, if I'm not mistaken, it's using, it's using one GPUs, well, this one. So this one is using one GPU and it's there where uh, my model is deployed. Because as, as you might know in Kubernetes, there is a scheduler that will, you know, schedule the pod in, in a specific node in the cluster. And the second thing is the workload, which is a very important thing. Here in the workload, I will filter GKE, just one information is like an enterprise uh, version that I can have a lot of clusters at the same time. So now I will just put the cluster that we are working on, which is AI on GKE. And this is the model loader. This is VLLM server. And if I go to Llama to 70 billion, I can see uh, here the, the metrics. So uh, as I mentioned, like it's very important to see always what's happening uh, in the metrics. And if I go to, to the console here and I do kubectl get pods, Yeah, so here I can see the Llama 2, 70 billion. And if I port forward the LLM and I go to localhost, So this is the model uh, that that I deployed using using TGI, and if I send a request here, I prepared already. So this is the answer of the request. I I just put here only um, 20, if I'm not mistaken, uh, output tokens, 20 uh, max new uh, tokens output, and that's it. So I will not run the fine tuning because it will take a lot of time in order to uh, you know, uh, have all the fine tuning. I, uh, it's already uh, here. I fine tuned on, um, on the data that, that, that comes from hugging face as well. I can show you the data. We can Uh, not this one. 
Anyway, it's in the in the in the, in the Git, GitHub folder. I can maybe this data that uh, I, I took from Hugging Face. Um, that's it. I don't know. I don't know if you have questions. Yes. So the cost, it will depend as I'm using autoscaler here. So uh, it will spin up GPUs or nodes when uh, it will have more requests. So it will depend on the request that you have. So at the beginning, it will start only with one GPU and one node for your inference. But if you go more than that, it will spin up another, another node. The minimum cost, I didn't look, but I can, we can see that together here. It's playing around the beginning. Yeah. I don't have details about the coast, but you can you can find it easy on on. Um, is. 35 cents per GPU per hour. Okay. Thanks. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Uh, the slides are, I've already shared the slides on the, um, on the platform. You can find the slides and the GitHub Probo repository. I forget to put it, but it's AI, uh, dev or 2024. Uh, and this, uh, Niall, it's my name, uh, dash, uh, my, uh, first name, dash my second name. If you want to see, uh, the codes, thank you.